Bob Moses probably know this, but but just tell me um, very briefly how who got access? You worked with Anthony, right? Yeah. So I um, I met Anthony while uh, when I worked in politics. I was his chief of staff for a couple of years uh, when he was in Congress, and then uh, I left politics and moved into filmmaking. And Lisa and I started working together, and he and I stayed in touch over the years. And then when he um, got caught up in the scandal and, and resigned, Elise and I were talking about the possibility that, of, of telling his story. And so I started talking to him about that. And we batted around the idea of, of doing a documentary. Was whether... that before he decided to run for mayor? Or yeah, after? so that was right, basically right after he resigned, this conversation started. And it really continued over the course of a couple of years of uh, going back and forth and trying to see if he might be... Uh, open to it, uh, and then ultimately he, it seemed like he really was not going to go for it, that he uh, didn't want to do it, um, and we were disappointed, but um, okay, and then on um, the morning that he announced he was running for mayor, um, I got a text at uh, around 6 in the morning from him saying, I'm in, do you want to come to my apartment, I'm here, hold up all day with my staff, uh, and bring a camera, uh, and I said, okay, I'll be right over, and um, really just ran on over and texted Elise on the way, oh my god, you know, and uh, then we started shooting. So it was really, uh, as you saw from the, just shooting the whole way through from the day he announced all the way to the end. All right, so let's, uh, I imagine there are a lot of questions, but maybe there aren't. Yeah, yeah right there. Yeah, I don't know where to start. If you can speak up, please, so yeah. we can hear you. So, how did you do it? Why didn't he stop you? Yeah, so why, yeah, why didn't he, well, why didn't he stop you? He already said yes, I guess, but was there a point, and yeah, the question is how, and you're also so, you know, have real access, so close up, yeah. and there must have been a point where he was really kind of sorry he said yes. Well, that's a really good question, and as you guys saw at the end of the film, it's a question that we pose directly to Anthony, and it was something we were wondering about as well. And, um, and at the end, he gives us an answer uh, where he says that he wanted to be viewed as the full person that he was, and not as just a punchline. And I think that, you know, that was our intention with this film as well, to show um, um, a different side to Anthony than you hadn't seen before. Uh, a more complex, nuanced portrait. I mean, he had just been, after his sexting scandal, he had just been uh, reduced to a caricature and a punchline, and our hope was something more complex would come through. I mean, it's been said, I think, that those that are the most exposed are often the least revealed, and um, I think that was certainly the case with Anthony, and that was one of our intentions with the film, and I think that was in part his reasoning, but Josh can also yeah. talk about and continuing. I, it's a little uh, counterintuitive, I think, in a sense. Uh, I mean, the assumption is that when, uh, when things went south that he would want us to stop shooting. Uh, but I think, in a certain way, you know, this motivation to have a different version of his story told, uh, you know, one that you know, captured kind of the full picture, and uh, I think that that... Uh, motivation kind of intensified for him when the scandal broke. When the scandal um, came back and it looked like it might overshadow everything and everything would become, you know, just all about the scandal all over again, I think in, in some sense it, it became almost more important that there was uh, a camera in the room documenting you know, everything else that was going on as well. And there were moments that he asked to, you know, asked Josh to stop filming if you saw that, so. Yes, right here. Hi, uh, first of all, thank you so much awesome documentary. It was wonderful to watch. Um, in the process of watching, you know, it seems really clear that Uma didn't speak to you guys very much, and I wondered if that was uh, a personal choice on her part, whether it was a choice that they made as a couple, a choice that you guys made in editing, or if it was something that uh, Anthony Weiner's campaign decided it might be good for her. So this is a question about Uma and her not speaking to you very much, and, and was that their choice, your choice? I mean, you know, she's more reserved and quiet than Anthony. He's like, she's a more reserved and quiet person than Anthony, and what you see in the film is the what we got from her. Um, and, and the little bit that you have, it's not as much as him. He was, the access was really with, with Anthony, and Josh had that relationship, and we were following that along the way. But, um, you know, I think that she, even though she is more quiet, she was also judged and ridiculed, just like he was. And I do think there was a sense 
that she wanted another story told as well, something a little bit more complete, you know, to see her as a full person, a wife, a mom, someone with a really important job. Um, so you get a glimpse of someone beyond just that caricature. Yes. Uh, two questions. Did the communications director walk away at some point because we don't see her at the end of the film? The other question, though, is that when you showed this at Sundance, we were in the beginning of this primary campaign. And I wondered, as filmmakers, what you think of the spectacle that's going on now as to the spectacle that you witnessed and recorded. The, the, the first question of the campaign manager, if she, um, if she did walk away at one point, she was here at the end. And the other is your comments uh, and observations about this crazy yeah. campaign that's going on now. Yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, first of all, um, Barbara Morgan did stay on the campaign through to the end, um, so she was she never left. Okay. Um, the you know this question about about the current political cycle is is a very interesting one, and, and you know we do I think want this film to be. Uh, part of the conversation, you know, beyond just Anthony's story and this one campaign and this New York story, you know, we do think that, um, you know, it is interesting to get this kind of front row seat to kind of what our politics has become and how much, as you say, it is now, the conversation really is driven by, um, you know, this appetite for spectacle and this impulse toward entertainment. Um, and you see that play out, of course, in the course of Anthony's campaign and the way everything is over overtaken by the scandal. And you also see it uh, in, in the current presidential campaign um, in a figure like Donald Trump, right? Who uh, I think very clearly a lot can be said about him, but one thing I think a lot of us can agree on is that he's someone who understands how to use spectacle um, to, to raise his profile. I think actually I read in the New York Times the other day that he has something like $2 billion worth of earned media so far, which is, you know, record-breaking by a lot, and it's by far more than any candidate in, in American political history. I mean, this is someone who understands that in order to have a voice in the conversation, you have to figure out how to, how to put on a show, essentially. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think we do see the parallels, certainly, between this story, and we're excited for our film to be, uh, hopefully, part of the conversation. Yeah. No, I think that's exactly right, what Josh was saying, um, and, and what you brought up. Uh, you know, we worked on this and we didn't know exactly when it would come out and that and but we're so excited that it is coming out right now because we do think it could um, have something important to say about how our media and politics is I mean the parallels between Anthony and Trump uh, they're, they're, they're there um, I do think that Anthony both personally and politically is very different but in the same way that um, Trump knows how to you know, get attention by being brash and having this air of authenticity. Um, you know, Anthony understood that as well, and I think it says something about our politics that in order to be a politician today, you have to create a spectacle. Um, in the back, in the middle, yeah. So in all your dealings with, with him, do you think there's any way he could have been elected mayor? Well, um, yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, he was leading in the polls. Um, and so I think New Yorkers seem to think that um, he uh, maybe deserved to be mayor uh, pretty clearly, I think. Um, and, you know, it's an interesting question. Had, you know, had this scandal not broken a second time, um, what would have happened? Uh, and, you know, of course we don't know, but, you know, obviously, you know, he had qualities that, um, that were really resonated uh, with, with, with New Yorkers. He was, you know, I think as you saw, he was very smart, he was very hardworking, he was, um, you know, a really, in many ways, he had incredible political talents, and, um, and still does in some ways. So, yeah, I think that, that certainly could have gone that way. I think even he or somebody on his staff said at one point, you know, there have been 10 more weeks, he could have possibly, you know, uh, gotten back. He did seem to fall off the rails, though, a bit, you know, after it broke again. Yes? Yeah, was there any discussion of him considering doing preemptive uh, damage control before this came out? Was there any discussion um, with, with him? With, with 
with Weed or of doing damage control before the film came out? Oh, buying off a girl? No. Like buying off a girl yeah. or anything? No. Not that we know of. Yes? I was wondering what the reaction of uh, Anthony and, and Yuma have been to the film, have yes. seen it, and also what are their lives like you know, post film? Uh, so, have they seen the film? So, they haven't actually seen it yet. Um, we, we offered to show it to them months ago, actually, before it was totally finished. Um, and uh, they didn't want to see it. Uh, so it's an open invitation, and they're certainly welcome to see it whenever they want. Um, they're married, they live in an apartment in Manhattan, uh, and they're raising their son together. He's like a commentator on New York yeah. One, isn't he? Still, yeah, you saw a couple clips at the end there. He's uh, a pretty regular a pundit on New York One, and goes on various shows periodically, and he gives a column in the Daily News, and has a consulting business. And, <laughs> and who is obviously still working for Hillary Clinton. Yes. I'm sorry, could you speak up a little? Yes. What about the fact that, um, how is this film going to affect all the Hillary Clinton's campaign, given that this is sort of her, you know, second in command? She said it's like the daughter. What do you think this, how is that going to play out? Do you think this film could have an impact on Hillary's campaign? I mean, the answer is we don't know how it's going to play out. But, you know, we have no control over how Secretary Clinton's opponents or others will choose to utilize this film. But as Josh and I were saying, we really hope that this film uh, can be seen as a film about, you know, what our politics has become and how it's driven by entertainment. And, you know, just tweets and sound bites and one-liners become the way of talking about political news coverage. You know, these easy narratives become the main focus right now in, in you know, politics. And, and I guess we really think this film is more about Trump and Hillary and, um, and hope you know, it can be a part of the, the conversation. Uh, yes? Do you have distribution and what's next for you? Yeah. Um, yes, they do have distribution. Tell us about distribution. Yes, we do. Uh, Sundance Selects um, uh, has picked up the film and is putting it in theaters, uh, opens uh, here in New York on May 20th and in LA. Um, and then it will be on uh, Showtime in October. Right there in the middle. <laughs> Is there anything too sensitive that they cut out of the film? Is that the question? No. We tried to. We tried to use. Uh, I can't imagine. We tried to put in most dramatic material that we could to tell the story. You know, I mean, we had something like 400 hours, um, so yeah. uh, there was a lot that ended up on the cutting room floor, but, um, but no, I mean, we, yeah. of course, preserved the story and said it you know, the best way we could. Yes? Well, I'm do you think, Tennessee Clinton will be able to get the Survive this National Enquirer story? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so now you're experts on this. <laughs> Let's talk about Ted Cruz and the National Enquirer. Well, yeah, I was, I was thinking, like, I don't think these things surprise us anymore. Uh, <laughs> Although, you know, Ted Cruz has been in the news for years. Yeah. 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 Ye
Um, and so it was a little bit of a, of a, a tricky line to walk, I think, in the construction of the story, but um, it's good to hear that's your reaction. Because <laughs> there's a lot more of that than we saw in this film, I'm sure. Yes? Second question is how long did it take to edit? And he's an insider. And yeah, and how did you well how did you do this fly on the wall thing, which of course according to Anthony was always fly on the wall. <laughs> it's a good process question. Yeah, I mean, we actually started uh, with um, as I said on that first day when I ran over there, I actually grabbed Sean McGing, who is up in the corner there, who is an excellent cinematographer. <laughs> So some of those first uh, days and weeks, really, um, I was uh, filming with with Sean, and then um, it, it became pretty clear pretty quick that there wasn't uh, there wasn't a lot of room. I mean, as as you're saying, it was really a, a very you know our footprint just could not be that big, and so it really just ended up being um, enough room for myself. And so I had to pick up the camera and uh, in some ways uh, learn how to shoot. Um, <laughs> our editor it likes better. our editor yeah. likes to joke that, to that the footage uh, <laughs> improves dramatically. Um, as, as beginning of the end. Um, but Sean did continue to help filming throughout. There were some scenes there where um, we had multiple people, um, election day is one of them. Um, but yeah, it was basically just uh, me with a camera. And yeah, and then after, afterwards, um, we had, I mean, we finished, uh, we've been, we sat with the 400 hours of footage for about two and a half years, um, really transcribing, going through it, talking about story, um, working, you know, and then working with the governor who is who brought you know his fresh eyes to it. Um, yeah. I mean, the real the edit was about a year or so. Yeah. Uh, let me let me see. Yeah, in the strike. So this is the question about the, the, the first scene, him in Congress, um, and how, which obviously made you want to work for him, and also has those qualities of his that sort of helped in his downfall. Talk about, talk about using that material and, and the choice of where to place it. I mean, in terms of the time, it's actually interesting. I, I worked for him before a lot of that, a lot of that stuff, you know, him yelling on the floor of Congress and um, sort of some of his antics on cable news, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with you know, some conservatives. Um, a lot of that actually came uh, after I worked for him, and you know he had a, a real rise um, in, in prominence and in stature through a lot of those sorts of things. Um, and this speaks to some of what Elise was saying before in terms of you know kind of the politics of spectacle as they are today. You know Anthony was really um, pretty talent talented. He was really spectacularly good at sort of pulling the lever, and he would be the first to admit this, kind of pulling the levers of the media, modern media, in a way that amplified his voice and, and, and successfully uh, made him um, part of the conversation in the service of, of his agenda. And so, you know, that was, you know, was those YouTube moments, right? Was that video you saw at the beginning really went viral. Um, a lot of the, you know, he was sort of famous for going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bill O'Reilly and Megyn Kelly in ways that were just really uh, entertaining and really resonated with um, the progressive left uh, in a way that, that made him famous. Um, and that was really setting him up to be actually uh, the next mayor. And that was really his ambition. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's sort of the history. I, yeah, I think that in terms of seeing the, 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 same, the same things that made him successful also contributed to his downfall. I and mean, we talked about that as well. I think that, and, and I think you can see it in, in not only the beginning, but throughout the film, where he's got such self-awareness and such insight, and then such blindness, and those, and and I think that just played out a lot and um, it kind of hubris about it. I don't, uh, the, the, uh, that moment in the beginning where he's yelling at Peter King, right? 
I mean, that really was a, a sort of turning point for him um, in terms of his, his popularity. And um, it was totally unplanned. And I think that's part of why it, it resonated so much, is because it felt authentic. And it really, uh, it really was. He was, he was telling me about it later, that like he just went up there to kind of give whatever the response was to the conservative side. And he had no expectation or plan of doing that. He just was angry. Um, so, you know, um, as Lisa's saying, there's a kind of like, the flip side, the same things that I think made him successful initially, ultimately, um, were problematic for him. Yes? So, one of the criticisms of Anthony Weiner is that he's narcissistic, and you chose to put in a number of shots of him seeming to really get a kick out of watching himself on TV. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if at the end of it all, do you feel like he's especially narcissistic, or is that just, is he doing the normal job of being a politician? Is, is he particularly narcissistic or just normally narcissistic? <laughs> That's funny, some people... That's my interpretation of the question. I think it's a really good question, and I don't know that we know exactly the answer. Um, obviously, there's an element of narcissism in all of the politicians, and he, and he actually, you know, he says that. So politicians are wired in some way and they need attention. Um, a lot of people have seen this, we've shown this film now to a few audiences, um, and the range of reactions is really... Um, it's a little bit gratifying. Some people say, wow, he's so much more complicated than I thought. And then the next person that we talk to says, wow, he's exactly as narcissistic as I thought. <laughs> so there's this, you know, I think it speaks to what we were hoping to do with the film, which is to, just to convey the complexity of his character. Yeah. And I think um, the other thing, what we wanted to do, and it just speaks to where our culture is at, just the way in which you can just watch yourself and this sort of selfie culture and um, the, the, our narcissistic culture that we might be in and, and, it's, and his story can be emblematic in that way. And I think stylistically going into this, one of the things that was important for us with the film is to sort of show the, the, public, um, the public story that, of Anthony and then flip behind the, behind the curtain and see him either watching it and, and what was really happening and that interesting dynamic of as it plays out so that was one of the reasons, you know, that, that we had that ability to sit with the character after something happens and what it's really like for them. Yes? Uh, did you ever think of putting in at some point that what he did is done by hundreds of thousands of people every single day? And how did you handle the Sydney Leathers spectacle in terms of not being a part of it, but re but also recording it, what were those conversations like? Did, did you ever, uh, you know, consider to the thousands people yeah. do the same that he yeah. did, and also talk about us covering Sydney Leathers? I, there was a, de a decision early on that we were going to stick with Anthony and be with him as events unfolded. We really wanted to have it be a character-driven, verite documentary as much as possible, so that you're having just that his point of view through events. Um, and not broadening it to talk to others. Um, and, and same thing in terms of, you know, you see City, but she's not a central character. You see it through, you know, a, a little bit more from his, from his point of view. Um, well, we just got the hook, so um, that's all we have time for. Um, we have time for